Oh, and there it is. So you'll see. Hello everyone and welcome to Book Days. Today's adventure has brought us to our hometown of Round Rock, Texas. The setting of today's book is inspired by a curious monkey that takes a tour of Fire Station 3. Will his curiosity get the better of him? Let's read our book. The book of the day is Curious George and the Firefighters by Margaret and H.A. Rays. Now it's time for our very own tour of Fire Station 3. I'm so excited to be here with Firefighter Colin Sanderson. Thank you so much for being here today. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. I am so excited to see this fire station. It is brand new and we're going to get a legit tour of this amazing station. So let's start off, we're here in the bay. Colin, I'm just gonna hand it over to you because I know you know it from top to bottom. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, so this is, uh, like she was saying, a very brand new station built in 2020, moved in at the end of 2020 in November. Uh, the previous house that they were at was built in 1991. So a little bit older house. Uh, and I know the guys here, very thankful to be at a, at a new station. And so Colin, I see more than one truck here. Yes, ma'am. Um, so this is what they call a dual house. Ah. It has an engine company and a truck company. Okay. Um, so the difference being the engine company, uh, that's where all the hose rides, that's where all the water's at. Mm -hmm. um, so anytime we get a fire, we're the guys pulling the fire hose off the line inside the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, the truck will show up. They'll put the big uh, ladder up in the air. Um, oh. And those guys get to do all the fun stuff. They get to kick ah. the doors in. They get to uh, search, and they're the they're the true heroes. They save all the people, pull them out of the house, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the engine's primary job is to put the fire out. Oh, that's interesting. I've never thought about that. I guess I always just assumed that all firefighter, <laughs> all fire trucks did like essentially the same thing. Yes, ma'am. That's so it's, really it's cool. kind of broken up into different jobs. Okay. And responsibilities. I'm here with Ryan, and we, he's going to show me the fire trucks, the most exciting part. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, so most people think that these are just fire trucks. There's actually a term for it. This is a fire engine. Uh, an engine specializes in water supply and fire extinguishment. Uh, the fire department has multiple ranks, kind of like the military. We have firefighters like myself, we have drivers, and then we have lieutenants on engines. As you can see, the lieutenant has a different color than the rest of us. We all have yellow helmets and he has an orange helmet. Uh, the lieutenant is in charge of making all the big decisions on different uh, various calls. Uh, back here is where the firefighters will ride. As you can see, we have all our air packs, kind of like how kids have backpacks. That's our backpack. That's what we carry into a fire and keeps us safe from the smoke. And if we move back here, this is all the hoses, as you can see. We've got different sizes. If we got a big fire, we'll pull this hose. If we got a smaller fire, we'll pull this hose. Uh, each can throw, uh, flow up to about 300 gallons of water a minute, so it wow. can fill up a bathtub pretty quick. <laughs> that is quick. Yes, ma'am. So what is in this one right here? In this one, uh, this is the firefighter compartment, as we like to call it. It's got all our medical equipment. So if somebody's having a heart attack, we can use stuff to treat them from this area. We have something called the airway bag, which can support somebody's airway. We've got an oxygen cylinder, different various equipment in here. Back here, we have tools to break into doors. If somebody's left their door locked and we see a fire in their house, we can break the door down. Back here we have a chainsaw. That's for cutting a roof because sometimes there's a lot of smoke in the house. We want to get that out so that we can actually see. Um, over here is a fan that will help blow out the smoke. We've got some kitty litter for car wrecks. A lot of the time oil will spill and we'll clean that up using that. I didn't, never knew, you, why do you guys use kitty litter? Uh, it's just a good absorbing agent. It oh. soaks up all the oil a little bit better than other agents. This is the hose that we use to connect to a hydrant. We wouldn't ever use this to actually spray water on the fire. This is what takes the water from the hydrant to the truck. And then we take the water from the truck to those hoses and okay. put it on the fire. Um, back here we have some ground ladders. This is a 24 foot extension ladder. This is a 14 foot roof ladder. 
Uh, if we needed to rescue someone from a window, that's how we would get them. So on car wrecks, sometimes the doors will get molded and locked and the person's inside and we can't use our hands to get it out. So we use this call, uh, the called life. The Spreaders, Jaws of Life, life. is what it's more well known as. Um, over here we have various stabilization tools. This is if the car is on its side and we're worried about it rolling. We'll use these to keep it in place. Um, and then over here is where all the fun stuff happens. So a lot of people think firefighters, we're not too smart, we break stuff for a living. But this is actually where the brains come in. Uh, in general, these levers, we pull them and it sends water to various different outlets such as the hoses. Uh, you have to learn some pretty fancy equations to know how much water you want to send because if yeah. you send too much then the yeah. firefighter is going to be holding on for dear life spraying around water. But... Wow, that is a lot of <laughs> buttons and levers. Yes ma'am. <laughs> as we make our way into the bay, as you can see, they leave their equipment here. Colin, can you talk about that just a little bit? Yes ma'am. So. Uh... Obviously, we don't know when we're going to get a, a fire call or something that we're going to have to move pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so all throughout the United States, any fire department you'll go to, uh, you'll see the guys kind of pre-stage their gear. Um, so that's just, so if the tones drop, I can come out, I can put all my gear on quickly. Uh, the national standard is about two minutes to have all your gear on in the truck ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, here at Round Rock, we like to do it in under a minute wow. that's that so that's just getting in the truck and ready to go out the door so that is crazy all that gear has to go on very very quickly wow so. do you guys ever have contests to see who can get oh, it on yeah. oh, absolutely yeah? yes ma'am <laughs> uh, especially during the fire academy uh, and a new guy like me uh, when they put you out on the streets it's kind of a bragging right kind of thing so that's so who, cool. Who can beat the new guy or can the new guy beat everybody else? So I love it. It's very fun. Competition is not just for sports. Nope. Oh, they do no. it here at the firehouse. <laughs> <laughs> very yes, neat. All um, right. So next is the bunker room. Yes, ma'am. Very cool. So why do they call it a bunker room? Um, so back in the old days, uh, we're talking like 1800s, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, when it was still horse-drawn equipment, mm -hmm. it would usually be a two or three story firehouse. And the guys uh -huh. would sleep in a single dormitory mm -hmm. and they would put their bunker gear right next to their bed. So they would get uh -huh. in their bunker gear inside the station, right? Gotcha. Uh, nowadays, cancer, uh, all the smoke that we go into, it's mm -hmm. very carcinogenic. Uh, so we leave our gear uh, notice how this is all cinder blocked. Yes. Uh, so this is completely separate from the rest of the station. Uh, so all the smoke and all the nasty stuff that you don't want to breathe in will essentially try and stay in here. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is just a, a central spot for everybody's gear to be in. Oh, I never even would have yep. thought about that. Yep. So Do you guys go through a special cleaning? For yes. The uh, I can show you that as well. Round Rock has actually one of the only ones I believe in the United States for oh, wow. a specific piece of equipment that we house here. So very cool. Morning times you'll you'll come in, shift changes at seven. Mm -hmm. So at about six thirty, uh, the guy relieving me tomorrow will pull my gear off, put it in my locker, and then he'll get his from here his gear locker, mm -hmm. put it on the engine. So. I love how everyone has their own yep. equipment. Yep. Yep, so everybody, cool. it's got their names, um, and then that correlates into the locker room inside mm -hmm. that we'll be able to see correlates with names and everything. Very cool. I love this. This is like the book where C Curious George goes and sees all the equipment ready to get on the truck. <gasps> fire station three. So we're, now we're getting to go inside the fire station just like Curious George. Ryan, I'll let you lead the way. All right, so this is the inside of Fire Station 3. You can see we got into the number 3 here. Ta-da! Uh, we go further <laughs> inside. Our pride and joy, the table that the guys here made themselves. <gasps> wow! It took them a long time to make it. <laughs> that is gorgeous. What kind of wood is this? Uh, it's oak wood, actually. Wow! And I love the fire hydrants holding it up yep. as the legs. That is 
Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. And the whole thing costed, I think, $5 million to build this place. 5.2, something, wow. something around there. I can't believe it. It is, it is state of the art. I've never yes, seen a fire station like it. Yep. Uh, we got the kitchen in here. We got a little movie theater <gasps> right this here. We don't get so to spend cool. too much time in here. We'll yeah. get a few calls a day, but whenever we can, we'll try and rest up. Now, do you guys ever have movie nights here? We do. They yeah. always get interrupted. I don't think we've <laughs> sat through one this year, but we're getting there. So. Like, goal for 2021. Right. We're going to get through a movie right night now. together. See if we can make it through a movie. <laughs> I love it. And I know uh, kitchens and firehouses are very famed for cooking. Right. I'm not one of those. No. <laughs> the rest of the guys here around here have some skills. Are they the main ones that do all the cooking for you guys? Uh, pretty much. Guys we, and girls? Yep. Wow. This is like a full service. Yeah, kitchen. I love the kitchen. Now, how many meals do you guys eat here at the station? We got some pretty big guys here, so we'll we'll do anywhere from six to ten meals a day, just to fuel up. Wow. So. Okay, so it's not like the the lunch and the dinner. You guys eat. And we eat as a much as we can because we don't basis. know when we're going to get a big call that's going to re require a lot of energy. So. That is true. You might mm. miss dinner altogether. Right. Rough. This holds the rest of our fire crew. Uh, gentleman here I work with. Hello everyone! <laughs> uh, this is this Good. is where all the important stuff happens. The work is mostly done. <laughs> so, and then we have the head honcho over here, El Capitan. Because there's multiple ranks. There's the lieutenant and then the captain. The captain rides on the aerials. Um, and then back over here we have where we sleep, or at least we try to sleep. Right. <laughs> well, it doesn't always happen. Absolutely. So we have some rooms here. Mm-hmm. Uh, then over in there is the locker room. Okay. Locker room. Got some bathrooms, more rooms. And then we have our wonderful paramedics over here who ah, ride on the ambulance. Yes. I yeah, want to give credit where credit's due. These guys Hello. are the real heroes. So. EMS, good. How are you? Good. 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 All right. <laughs> it makes like a full yeah full, a full circle loop. very yeah. cool it's funny when there's a call you'll see all six of us trying to cram down here running tripping over each other oh no yeah do these halls light up when a call comes in uh these the speakers let's see where they are uh see those intercoms up there mm -hmm. they'll light up red they're scattered around the station uh if we catch a call you'll get to see it uh basically if a call comes Right here, this is uh, road 172. Uh, if there was a car wreck mm -hmm. right here, there will be a little dot such as this. So engine four just got dispatched to a call and they'll know exactly where to go. Wow, yeah. that's really neat. I've never seen the on this side, like yeah. in a fire station, how it right. comes out. Yeah, but it's very important whenever you call 911, try and give us as much information as possible as to where you are and what's going on. Because mm -hmm. if you give us the wrong street, we might pull up over here when it was actually Ooh. right there. So that's a big thing. So that's why it's up oh, and there it is. So you'll see. So we saw the bunker room. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about your laundry room and yeah. i think it's super cool that you have your own laundry room here right. so it is a little bit dirty right now we have 28 guys at this station wow. and only two of these so uh, we'll wash our basic uniform stuff in these mm -hmm. uh, and then we have something called an extractor here this is basically like a high-tech uh, washer where we'll throw our bunker gear in here because this is where all the nasty stuff from fires is ah. um, yeah, you can see in there, that's where we'll throw it. And then our new addition, this is called an air pack cleaner. Uh, we just got it, haven't used it yet, but anytime we get a fire, our air packs are really nasty, so we'll wash mm -hmm. them in here. Very cool. And and the air packs, just to clarify for the kids, they're what go on your back with the oxygen. Right, the big right. tanks. It's like a little backpack. They go in us, here. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? That is so cool. And now, how often do you uh, wash your, your stuff? Uh, once after every fire. Okay. At least once, depending on how well it gets it out. 
So what happens if it's in the washing machine and you get called on another call? So we never wash it in the same shift and we're trying to get a second ah. set of gear for everybody so that if we do get a fire with this gear, yes. we'll throw that in the wash and have a second set of That's gear. Smart. But That's if not, we'll just leave it. Okay. So we gotta be ready. So how hard is it to get into the fire academy? So the fire academy is school related stuff. That's not the hardest part. It's actually getting hired at a department where it's the hardest. Really? Um, smaller departments, it can be easy, it can be hard. Uh, usually there will be anywhere from like one spot for a firefighter to uh, my group had 12 spots and you could have 10 guys testing, you could have 5,000 guys testing for these spots. Um, wow. It just depends. So. And I've heard Round Rock is a harder city to get into. Is that true? It is. Uh, I believe in mine with 12 spots we had about 300 people test for them. So. Wow. Well, congratulations! Thank you. I got <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's a huge deal. <laughs> and what are just some fun things that you've experienced over your time here at the Round Rock Fire Department? Well, it's hanging out with the other guys, getting to do what we do. There's nothing better than helping people. Um, it's the greatest job in the world. Every firefighter you ask, I promise you, will tell you that same thing right there. There's nothing that beats this job. So. Thank you so much for your service. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And for being here today. It's our one year anniversary. Thank you so much for watching this special episode. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures. We'll see you soon.